So go ahead and, and fire up a blank plane in Maya. Uh, what we're gonna learn today is called bump mapping, okay? Um, bump mapping. And here's a little video on what it is. So if we select this plane and we look over at our attribute editor on the right side of the screen, uh, we will be able to see a tab. It should say Lambert by default. That is the material that's like blend that we used earlier. It's a, it's a material, right? Okay, so you should see a little uh, sample of this material here. Um, it's pretty plain Jane. Let me go ahead and assign a new one here because mine's messed up uh, but yeah this material uh, obviously doesn't have a color uh, file created a texture file we can do that but today what I'm interested in in learning how to do is creating a bump map okay so this is gonna be a file just like our color file that is gonna work in the bump mapping area so on the right side um, look for the line that says bump mapping and there's a blank slot and to the right of that is our favorite checkerboard so we're going to click on that checkerboard and a window will appear right Did everybody get that window okay so four items down is file our our favorite button on this window file we're going to create a file for it Alrighty. And so now it has a bump map. Now the bump map's pretty boring right now. It's nothing much. Uh, basically, it's a black and white image that tells it how to deform. So let's go ahead and select it again, the plane. And let's go to our rendering tab on the tool shelf. And again, we'll look for our paintbrush, which is towards the middle of the screen on our tool shelf. And we already know we're going to need the settings, so let's just double click, okay? Click, click, and you've got your paint settings again. Now, by default, if you try to paint this surface, you aren't going to get anything right now because we are not going to paint uh, colors on this thing. We are going to paint <clears throat> the bump map, okay? So we're, we're mapping out a different file. So I want y'all to kind of scroll down in this window. Scroll down until you see the area that says file textures, okay? And in here it says attribute to paint <clears throat> to paint. We want to paint the bump map, right? So if we click the drop down and say bump map, now when we go to paint with any luck, we get a raised or indented surface now the the amount it raises or indents depends on the color and the opacity and whatnot that you're trying to use so i'm going to go uh just show y'all what happens with a pure uh white color and a normal ish brush now y'all might want to adjust your brush size just heads up if i if i paint white onto this thing i'm getting an indented surface if I paint black, I'm going to get a raised surface, right? Or it looks that way at least. This is a great way to capture surface detail. I'm going to pause just a second and answer some questions. So if you get the hang of indenting and raising this uh, bump map to raise the surface or indent it or whatnot, then a great idea is to use these brushes that are found in this folder here in your window uh, the special kind of artistic brushes right so I could use a waffle pattern for instance and I can make waffles right it's pretty cool it's pretty cool how I can make that happen that quickly right yeah, maybe we'll make it a four-leaf clover here. Well, yeah, it kind of <laughs> pattern got off there, but it's okay. Um, so check out some of these brushes, okay? 
the the really cool stuff comes along when you check out uh, these textures that you can add. They're black and white images that get projected onto this image. This rotate to stroke might mess you up on here. Um, so you might want to turn off rotate to stroke. But definitely check out these uh, this folder here and check out these images. So this, in combination with other things uh, like color, can be used to great effect to make things like um, skin, right? Uh, skin on an animal or a hide of some sort. My alligator, for instance, ought to have, um, you know, like sort of scaly um, skin, right? So he needs a bump map. So I'll have to apply that to him. Um, let me find that real quick. Alrighty, so I'm gonna try and edit the bump map on my alligator. Whoa! And if the strength is too high, basically strength is adjusted by opacity in this case. It's how see through you're changing, or how, how see through the images that you're changing the bump map with, right? So you get less effect from a lower opacity. Now, guys, a bump map is quite different from sculpting, okay? We would not want to try to add a creature's arm with a bump map because it really has a limit on how far it can um, stretch things, okay? It only goes on this image black to white and uses gray values in between um, and the black areas being the raised humps and the white areas being the lowered humps, right? But check out this alligator's um, texture and he just looks so much more realistic because of it, okay? So you can still add a color map to these objects by clicking on the checkerboard on the color line and then clicking on the file button. And in the tool settings for your paintbrush, you'll want to click on the color as the attribute to edit. So you can still edit your objects while um, using a bump map, right? And it's going to add so much. I mean, if you layer this onto an object with some nice paint layers like we were doing the other day, um, I think it was yesterday maybe actually, you're going to get some good stuff because uh, this is really uh, those little believable or the things that make it more believable those little surface deformations so that's a bump map uh, that's how we paint it and, um, and that's how we paint it in combination with normal paint